Hi, good day everyone. In this video, we will present and discuss the solutions of plate number one. So plate number one is divided into three parts. So the first part is a simple recall on basic concept, terms, and formulas. The second part is the shear, moment, and deflection of beams. And the third part is about centroids and moment of inertia. So to start with, so we have the first part, question number one, convert 120 megapascal to KSI. So to solve the problem, we will multiply the given 120 megapascal by the conversion factor, and that is 1 KSI is equal to 6.91 megapascal. So multiply, we have 120 megapascal multiplied by 1 KSI per 6.91 megapascal. So the megapascals will cancel out and the result is 17.37 KSI. Question number two we have, who is the English bricklayer who obtained a patent for for Portland cement. Okay, so the answer is Joseph Asby. Third question we have, when the failure of a reinforced concrete structure is due to simultaneous crushing of concrete and yielding of steel, then the design is blank. Okay, so the failure is simultaneous crushing of concrete and yielding of steel, and the design is called balanced design. Number four, we have compute the moment of inertia of a circle with radius 10 centimeters with respect to a line tangent to the circle. Okay, so we can draw the circle and the tangent. So we have here. So the tangent is the axis where the moment of inertia is to be computed. Okay, so since the axis is not passing through the centroid of the circle, then we will apply the transfer formula for the moment of inertia. Okay, so that is the moment of inertia with respect to the tangent is equal to the centroidal moment of inertia of the circle plus the area times the distance square. Okay, so the formula for the moment of inertia of the circle is pi r to the fourth over 10 where the radius is equal to 10. I mean pi r to the fourth over 4, where the radius of the circle is 10. Then we add area pi times 10 squared, then the distance from the center of the circle to the axis, where that is also equal to 10. Okay, so the result is this. Question number 5, we have, when the structure is designed as over-reinforced, then its failure is due to blank. Okay, so when the structure is designed as over-reinforced, that is, the steel reinforcement is stronger compared, the con compared to concrete. So when the structure will fail, if in case it will fail, then the failure is due to the crushing of concrete. Number six, we have, he is the inventor of pre-stressed concrete. So pre-stressed concrete is invented by Eugene Fresene. Number seven, compute the value of the modulus of elasticity of concrete that weighs 2,350 kilogram per cubic meter with Fc prime equal to 20 megapascal. So the modulus of elasticity of concrete is given by this formula. And then WC is equal to the weight of concrete in kilogram per cubic meter. So we can substitute. Then FC prime given equal to 20 megapascal. And so we can compute the modulus of elasticity. And that is 21,907 megapascal. Next question. Convert 18 KSI to megapascal. Okay. So... This is conversion from KSI to megapascal. So again, we will use our conversion factor. 
1 KSI equal to 6.91 megapascal. So, multiply 18 KSI by the conversion factor, 6.91 megapascal per 1 KSI. So, the KSI will cancel out and the result is 124.38 megapascal. Number 9, we have, what is the formula for the maximum moment of a cantilever beam with a span of L and loaded by a concentrated load P at mid-span? Okay? So, cantilever beam, maximum moment, the span is L, and the load is concentrated P at mid-span. Okay? So, since the load P is at mid-span, so that is at a distance of L over 2 from the fixed support. So, the maximum moment there is equal to P times the distance L over 2. Or we have here PL over 2. Question number 10. We have, what is the formula for the maximum deflection of a fully restrained beam of length L unloaded by a uniformly distributed load of W? Okay, so maximum deflection of a fully restrained beam length L loaded by a uniformly distributed load of W. So the maximum deflection here occur at the mid-span and that is given by the formula WL to the fourth over 384 EI. Okay, so that is the first part of plate number one. So we will now move on to the second part. So question number one. Draw the shear and moment diagram of the beam shown. Huh? So problem one. A simply supported beam with a span of 8 meters unloaded by Two concentrated loads of 10 kN, one at each middle thirds. Okay, so do not use formulas, just construct the shear and moment diagram. So we have three questions here. So at first, we will draw the beam, simply supported, span of 8 meters, and loaded by two concentrated loads of 10 kN, one at each middle thirds. Okay, so we can draw the beam we have here. Huh? Okay, so by symmetry, the reactions at the supports are just equal to 10. Huh? So symmetrical, so the reaction at each support is equal to 10 kN. So if we recall, the first question for this problem is, what is the maximum moment of the beam? Uh, so, to answer the maximum moment and then the second question, maximum shear and the shear at mid-span number 3, we can just draw the shear and moment diagram of the beam. Okay? Uh, so, after we have the reactions, we can construct the shear diagram. Uh, so, start with 0 at the left end and then because of the reaction 10 kN at that point so we will move up 10 kN there is no load from the support to this point where we have the 10 kN load so the shear diagram will go straight uh, then we will subtract the 10 kN load so this will move down then no load again go straight then at this point, we have the 10 kN load. So this will move down. Then no load again, straight line. And then we have the 10 kN reaction at the right end. So we will move up. Uh, so we have now constructed the shear diagram. Okay? So we will draw the moment diagram. So from left to right of the beam. So we have here. So start at the left end, we have the moment at that point is equal to 0. Then we will add the area of the moment diagram. And that is equal to 10 times 2.67. So 10 times 2.67 is equal to 26.67. And that is the moment at this point here. Now, from this point to this point, there is no 
drawing of the shear diagram. So, meaning, the moment remains constant at 26.67, so straight line. Then, at this point, we have the rectangular drawing of the shear diagram, and this is a negative area. And this area is equal to the value negative 10 times the distance 2.67. And that is negative 26.67. So, if you subtract 26.67 minus this area, it will close to 0. So, if we will now answer the questions. So, the first question is, what is the maximum moment of the beam? So, our answer is 26.67. The maximum shear is equal to 10. And the shear at mid-span, as we see, is equal to 0. So, we have our answers for this problem. Number 1, number 2, and then number 3. Problem number two we have here. A cantilever beam with a span of 1.5 meters is loaded by a triangular load of 12 kilonewton per meter at the support to zero at the free end. Then we have three questions. What is the maximum moment? What is the maximum shear? And then what is the maximum deflection if EI is equal to 150 times 10 to the 9? Newton millimeter square. Okay, so we can draw the cantilever beam. The span is 1.5 and then we have a triangular load. So the drawing is shown here. Okay, so to answer the questions, either we will use formulas or we will simply refer to the free body diagram of the beam. Okay. So, for the triangular load, we have the resultant of the load, and this resultant is equal to the area of the triangle here, and that is equal to 1 half, the magnitude 12, then times the distance 1.5, and this is equal to 9 kilonewton. So, for a cantilever beam, since we have only one fixed support at this end, which is the left end, so you have there the vertical reaction and then we have the moment. So if you refer to the free body diagram, to solve for the maximum moment, we can simply sum up moments at the fixed end. So summation of moments there, we have equal to 9 times the distance, which is one third of 1.5. So 9 times 0.5 is equal to 4.5 kilonewton meter. Or, if you will use the formula in our material there, this is being drawn there and then the maximum moment is given by the formula W L squared over 6. Uh, so we can just use this formula to answer the problem. Next problem or next question, what is the maximum shear? Uh, so, of course, if you sum up forces vertical, the maximum shear is equal to the resultant of the triangular load, and that is equal to 9 kilonewton. Or, if you refer to a formula, this is equal to WL over 2, and that is also equal to 9 kilonewton. The third question is the maximum deflection. So, for a cantilever beam, the maximum deflection occur at the free end. So, that is given by the formula WL to the fourth over 30 AI. So, we can substitute. We have 12 kilonewton per meter or this is newton per millimeter. Then, the length or the span is 1.5 meter. We convert it, to it into millimeter. And then we have the EI value. So the maximum deflection is equal to 13.5 mm. Next problem. A fully restrained beam has a span of 10 meters and carries a uniform load of 16 kilonewton, meet, kilonewton per meter, which extends to half of its span. What is the maximum negative moment? Number two, what is the maximum shear? 
And number three, what is the maximum positive moment? Okay. So, for this problem, since this is a fully restrained beam, and the fully restrained beam is an indeterminate beam. So, we cannot solve for the reactions of the beam by using statics alone. So, that is why in our beam formulas, the fully restrained beam loaded by this uniform load which extends half of the span, the formulas of some of the reactions are given. So, I think the maximum negative moment formula is given. The maximum shear formula is also given. So, we can use those formula in order to solve partially the reactions of the beam. So, we will draw the beam first. We have here. Okay. So, moment at B, moment at A, reaction at B, reaction at A, and then let's assume that we have this load, no? on the side uh, because you can draw it also on the other side as long as it extends half to its length okay so the maximum negative moment of course it will occur at support b so from the formula we have 11 wl squared over 192 so, substituting values, 11, then W is 16, L is equal to 10 meters over 192. So, that is equal to 91.67 kilonewton meter. So, that is a negative moment because the beam at this point is being bent concave downward naka sad face or naka sad na so that is concave downward so negative moment the next question is the maximum shear so i think uh, this is also given in the formulas beam formulas so we can solve for the reaction at b so by formula the maximum shear is equal to the reaction at B, which is equal to 13 WL over 32. So, substituting values, we have 65 kilonewton at support B. Now, the third question can be solved or can be answered by drawing the shear and moment diagram of the beam. So, we have here the beam again, and this is the moment at B, the reaction at B. Uh, then we don't have the moment at A and the reaction at A. Huh? Uh, so, by statics, we can now solve for the remaining reactions. So, I can sum up forces vertical in order to solve for the reaction at A. So, RA plus RB equal to 16 times 5. So, RA equal to 15. Then, I can sum up also moments at A. So, summation of moments at A equal to 0. So, I have 91.67 moment at B plus the moment produced by the uniform load 16 times 5 and then the distance from point A is 7.5. Then, minus the moment of the reaction at B which is 65 times the distance 10 minus the moment at A. So, the moment at A is directed counterclockwise equal to 0. So, the moment at A equal to 41.67. So, we have now the all the reactions of the fully restrained beam. We can now draw the shear and moment diagram. So, for the shear diagram, so, we will start from left to right. Okay. So, at point A, start at 0. We have the reaction at A there, 15. We will move up. From point A up to mid-span, there is no load. 
So, the moment diagram will stay horizontal. Then, we will subtract the resultant of the uniform load. So, 15 minus 16 times 5 will give us negative 65 at point B. And then, at point B, you have the reaction at B there, 65. So, it will close to 0. Now, we need the distance x in order to solve for the moment diagram or to draw the moment diagram. So we can solve for x first by proportion. So we have 15 over x is equal to 65 over 5 minus x. Then x is equal to this value. And the remaining distance here, 5 minus x is equal to this value also. Okay. So we can now draw the moment diagram. So from left to right, at the left end, we have the moment at A, which is 41.67. So the moment at A is negative moment because at point A, the beam is also bent concave downward. So that is a negative direction. So downward, negative 41.67. Then, we will add the area of the shear diagram from point A up to mid-span. So, this is 15 times 5. So, negative 41.67 minus 15 times 5 will give us 33.33. .33. Then, we will add the area of the triangle, this triangle. So, this is 1 half 15 times 0.9375. So we add that value to 33.33 and that will give us 40.36. And then from this point with the moment 40.36, we will subtract the negative area here of the shear diagram. So 40.36 minus 1 half 65 times 4.0625. And that will give us negative 91.65. Then at B, you have the moment there, negative 91.67. So move up close to zero. Ah, so for the third question, that is, what is the maximum positive moment of the beam? So as shown in the moment diagram, the moment at A is negative 41.67. The moment at B is also negative 91.67. And the positive moment here is at this point with the maximum value of 40.36. So maximum moment is equal to 40.36 kilonewton meter. Okay. Next problem, we have a prop beam has a span of 5 meters and carries a concentrated load of 12 kilonewton at 3 meters from the fixed end. Question number 1, what is the maximum negative moment? Number 2, what is the maximum shear? And number 3, locate the point of inflection. So when you say point of inflection, that is the point where the moment is 0. Okay, so prop beam span 5 meters and concentrated load of 12 kilonewton at 3 meters from the fixed end. So we can draw the beam here. Okay. Uh, so this is also another indeterminate beam. Uh, because as you notice, we have three reactions at the fixed support. Then we have one at the uh, simple support. So we have a total of four. So, our available static equations is only 3. So, this is indeterminate to the first degree. So, again, to solve the problem, we need formulas. Uh, let us say, no need of memorizing all the formulas here. No? As given in the uh, list of PIM formulas with common loadings. Uh, siguro, the technique is just to memorize some of the reactions in which the indeterminate beam will come out to be determinate. Then the remaining reactions can be solved 
by statics. Uh, so let us say, for example, in this beam, the maximum negative moment is given by the formula PAB over L squared times P plus A over 2. Okay. So if you can memorize this formula, then if you can solve this value, then the whole beam now with this value will turn out to be determinate. And you can now solve for the remaining reactions by statics alone. Okay? So, if we substitute values, we have 12, then this is the value of A. No? So, A is the distance from the concentrated load to the fixed support. And then we have here B. So, 12 times 3 times 2 over L, which is 5, then square it. Then B plus A over 2. So, the maximum moment is 10.08 kilonewton meter. Okay. So, the maximum shear, of course, it will occur at the supports. So, possible, it will be at A, where the shear is the reaction at A, or it can be at B, where the shear is the reaction at B. So, we can just solve it by formula or by statics. So, in our list, you have also the formula for RB. So, we can use it in our computation. So, RB is equal to PA squared times quantity 3L minus A over 2L cubed. And substituting values, we have 5.184. Okay. So, we cannot say that this is the maximum shear because we have also another support that is at point A. So, we can compute the reaction at A by statics. So, we can sum up vertical forces. So, RA plus RB equal to the total load 12. So, RA is equal to 6.816. So, meaning, if you compare the two reactions, it turns out that the reaction at A will give us the maximum shear. So, the maximum shear is at A and that is equal to 6.816 kilo newton. Okay, so the third question is the point of inflection. Okay, so the point of inflection can be answered by drawing the moment diagram of the beam. So we have here, we have now the values of the reactions. So for the shear diagram, starting from left, reaction at A, then no load, then subtract 12, that is negative 5.184, no load. And then we have the reaction at B. It will close to zero. Draw the moment diagram. So at A, we have a negative moment, negative 10.08. Then you add the area of the rectangle. So negative 10.08 times 6.816. And that will give us 10.08. 368. Then you subtract this area of the rectangle from the shear diagram. So we have 2 times 5.184. It will close to 0. So the location or the point of inflection is this point. And the location can be computed from the fixed support. And we can solve it by proportion. Okay? So by proportion x over 10.08 is equal to 3 minus x over 10.368 and x there is equal to 1.48 meters from point A, the fixed support. Okay, so that is the second part of our plate number one. So we will go to the third part which is about centroids and moment of inertia. Okay. So, problem number one, you have there, in the figure shown in figure 1.10-1, compute the location of the centroid from the x-axis, the moment of inertia with respect to the horizontal neutral axis, and the moment of inertia with respect to the top. All dimensions are in mm. Okay? So... 
this area can be divided into smaller areas with known formula for the area of each small areas okay so i will divide this into these parts so area one we have the two triangles area two we have the rectangle and area three the circle okay so we can compute for area one that is one half fifty times the height six hundred so that is fifteen thousand okay uh just omit the square here now this is not being squared it's not being squared so just delete the square here kindly take note no so this is only one half fifty times six hundred again just erase the power to here so area 2 is a rectangle so that is oh by the way 1 half 50 times 600 i think that will give us the correct answer our answer 15,000 is correct i will check in the calculator 0.5 times 50 times 600 okay so that is 15,000 so area 2 is a rectangle so to have 250 times 600 that will give us 150,000 then area 3 is a circle of diameter 150 mm so pi r squared over pi d squared over 4 so 1761.46 okay so to locate the neutral axis our reference is the base no the x axis here so the location of our centroid of the triangle is y1 and this is equal to two-thirds of 600 which is equal to 400 the centroid of the rectangle is one half of 600 and that is 300 and also with the centroid of the circle no? because the centroid of the circle coincides with the centroid of the rectangle so that is also 300 mm from the x axis okay so the total area can be computed total area is equal to twice the area of the triangle plus the area of the rectangle then you subtract the area of the circle now the area of the circle is to be subtracted because this is a hollow circle here so the total is this value so we can now solve for the location of the neutral axis from the x-axis we can use the Varenius theorem or the area moment theorem so we have here area total bar y is equal to twice of the rectangular area no? area 1y1 plus the rectangle area 2y2 then minus area 3y3 for the circle okay so substituting values total bar y we have computed this already then solving for bar y is equal to 318.48 answer for number one okay so the second question is the moment of inertia of this figure with respect to the neutral axis so since the neutral axis that must that does not pass through the centroids of the areas here we need or we will use the transfer formula so for the transfer formula we need the distances of the centroids of each area from the neutral axis ah. so for the triangular area area one this is now the distance d1 and take note that the distance d1 can be computed y1 in the previous figure minus bar y okay i will just show the previous figure first okay so this is y1 and this is bar y this is y2 and this is bar y same with the circular area so circular area and rectangular area computed in the same way huh? okay so we will now compute for 
the distances. Uh, so, D1 is equal to Y1 minus bar Y. So, equal to this. D2 is equal to bar Y minus Y2. And equal to this. Same with D3. Bar Y minus Y3. Okay? Uh, so, we will now compute the moment of inertia by transfer formula. Okay? So, we will compute the moment of inertia of each. Na? So, area 1 triangle, but we have 2 triangles here, so times 2. Plus the area of the, or the moment of inertia of the rectangle. Then, we subtract the moment of inertia of the circle. Okay? Uh, so, we have here. So, pip T times 600 cube over 36. So, BH cube over 36 plus 4 the triangle. Then, we add the area distance square times 2. Then, we have for the rectangle, BH cube over 12. So, 250 times 600 cube over 12. Then, plus the area times distance square. Then, for the circle, we have pi r to the fourth over four. Then we subtract area or plus area times d squared. But this is a negative value. Uh, so if you compute, we will get 5.32 times 10 to the 9. Okay, so third question. Compute the moment of inertia of the area with respect to the top. Okay. So, to compute the moment of inertia with respect to the top, notice that the top coincides the base of the triangle and the rectangle. So, instead of using the transfer formula for the triangular area and the rectangular area, we can just use the formula for the moment of inertia with respect to the base. Huh? So, if you recall, for the triangular area, the moment of inertia with respect to the base is equal to BH cube over 12. And for the rectangle, the moment of inertia with respect to the base is equal to PH cube over 12. Then, for the circular area, we can apply the transfer formula. Okay, so we can now Solve for the moment of inertia. So, triangle, BH cube over 12. Then, we have BH cube over 3 for the rectangle. And then, for the circular area, we have this. Uh, pi r to the fourth over 4 plus area times distance square. And that is equal to this value. Okay? So, next problem. For the figure shown, compute the location of the centroid, compute the moment of inertia with respect to the horizontal neutral axis, compute the moment of inertia with respect to the vertical neutral axis. Okay? So, the area is composed of a triangle, then a rectangle, but you subtract a quarter of a circle. Huh? Uh, so we can also divide this into three areas and compute each areas, area. So area 1, so area of the triangle. Area 2 for rectangle. Area 3, quarter of a circle. Uh, then we can locate for the centroid. So, for the x values, that is the distance of the centroid of each area from the y-axis. So, x1 is 2 thirds of 0.5. Then, x2 is equal to 0.5 plus 1 half of 1. And that is equal to 1 meter. Then, x3 is equal to the total distance 1.5 minus this distance which is 4R over 3 pi. Then, the y values, 
are the distances of each centroid of each area from the x-axis. So for y1, this is 2 thirds of 2.5. y2 is 1 half of 2.5. And y3 is 2.5 minus 4r over 3 pi. Okay, so add area 1, area 2, subtract area 3. So we have this total area. Uh, then we can now compute for the location of the centroid. Okay, so we are familiar with this formula already. Then we can substitute the values as computed here. Then we can get the value. So the centroid is located at this coordinates with respect to the x and y axis. Next question. Compute the moment of inertia with respect to the horizontal neutral axis. So same as what we did in the previous problem, we will compute for the distances. So we have here D1. So Y1 minus bar Y. D2 is bar Y minus Y2. And D3 is Y3 minus bar Y. Then we have the distances. Okay? So, apply transfer formula and substitute. We can get the moment of inertia with respect to the horizontal neutral axis. Then, the third question, moment of inertia with respect to the vertical neutral axis. Okay? So, again, compute for the distances. So, D1 here, this is BARD X minus X1. D2 here, this is Y2 minus or X2 minus BARD X. Then D3 is X3 minus BARD X. And then apply transfer formula in order to solve for the moment of inertia. And that is equal to this value. Okay, so that's the end of our discussion. So if you have some questions, uh, feel free to email me or contact me in Messenger. Thank you very much.